Uh, I'm joined today by uh, City Council President uh, Mary Sheffield, uh, Council Member from the 4th District, Letitia Johnson, and our Chief Operating Officer, Hakeem Berry. Uh, and we're really glad to be uh, making an announcement that all of us have wanted to do uh, for some time. Uh, in recent years, uh, SEIU and Unite Here, two active unions, uh, have been relentless in pushing uh, for a livable wage of $15 an hour. They've pushed it in the hotel industry, in the casinos, in nursing homes, among uh, security guards, in fast food restaurants. Uh, and I have always supported them in that effort. But every time I, I signed up to support them, I said, uh, you need to understand that I feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable with this because City of Detroit employees are not yet at $15 an hour. In fact, coming out of bankruptcy, we had well over 1,000 employees making less than $15 an hour, and we could not raise their pay without triggering the Financial Review Commission coming back in and taking over our operations. But every year, we moved more and more uh, employees into a higher and higher wage to try to reduce this. And at the start of this year, out of our 9,000 employees, we still had 270 employees in 57 classifications. And we knew who they were. They're the play leaders working uh, at our rec centers. They're the people answering the phone here and in the police precincts. They're the folks you see standing out on the streets uh, controlling traffic. They're the lifeguards. Uh, and uh, they still were lagging behind the $15 standard. And so we were sitting down with Hakeem Berry, who's been negotiating these, saying, OK, every year we get more and more classifications, more and more union contracts modified. Which ones are we going to do next so we can keep chipping away at this? Uh, we have a new council member, uh, Letitia Johnson, uh, who came in to see me with her list of priorities uh, that she wanted to address. And she said one of her highest priorities was, can we get every city employee to $15 an hour? And this is something council has expressed support for uh, for years. She said, what would it take? And I said, actually, we're looking at it right now to be about a million and a million and a half dollars in the next budget, but the first thing is we'd have to get council to approve changes to the master uh, pay schedule. That's got to go through the council's internal operations committee. And Council Member Johnson said, well, I chair that committee. That'll be OK. Uh, she says, how about I sponsor this? I said, we're going to have to amend a dozen collective bargaining agreements. We have to get them through, and then we're going to have to fight for the funding uh, in July. And uh, Council Member Johnson said, I will take the lead. I'll sponsor. Uh, the changes of the pay schedule, I'll sponsor uh, the contract amendments, I'll push for the funding. Uh, if you can move this in time for the next budget year, July 1st, uh, I will be the person on the city council side who takes the lead in getting it through. And when you've got the mayor and the council working together, uh, everything else gets a lot easier. Uh, and so Hakeem Berry called the Teamsters and asked me leadership, all 12 bargaining units that we, we need amendments to, our Teamsters or AFSCME, and even though you're giving raises, when you have employees represented by unions, you can't just change their pay. That has to actually be negotiated with the union and included in an amended agreement. Uh, all of them sound very willing to move quickly uh, to get uh, these uh, contracts modified, uh, and we feel like there's no reason uh, working together. Uh, we can't have all 9,000 city employees up to the $15 and our minimum by uh, July 1st. And this has been a road for us. Uh, but uh, these are very valuable employees. You think about the folks working in the rec center, they're watching our children every day to make them safe. You look at those folks standing out in all weather, moving traffic after sports events or coming out of rush hour. Uh, those folks are really important. They deserve to be treated uh, in this way. You go right down the list of who we've got, the, the lifeguards who are who are protecting lives at the public pools, um, I would say to all these employees, I appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, and we're finally uh, going to uh, raise your pay to recognize uh, that we don't want you going to work anyplace else with people who might be offering you uh, more money. And so for all of the city employees who stuck with us coming out of bankruptcy, we know we still have a way to go in a number of positions in getting to uh, the market but at least now we're making a clear statement. Uh, the city of Detroit has recovered far enough uh, that we can pay every single employee uh, a minimum of $15 an hour. I believe we can get it done 
uh, by July 1st. And with that, let me turn it over to the council member who is taking the lead in sponsoring this, uh, council member Letitia Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So if anyone has ever heard me talk about my background, uh, you hear me talk about growing up um, from very humble beginnings. Recognizing that the city of Detroit is one of the largest employers in Southeast Michigan and how it treats its employees has a significant impact on families and the local economy. Better wages will uplift families, enable the city to attract and retain better workers, and stimulate the local economy. It's a win for everyone. I stand alongside Council President Sheffield and previous council members who passed a resolution in April of 2021 to increase the master pay schedule to $15 an hour, as well as several current council members who are supportive of this effort. Given the support of the mayor, we have a tremendous opportunity to fine tune the details and to ensure that we can sustain these wages moving forward. This living wage increase will affect about 270 city employees, as the mayor indicated, in 57 positions at the cost of about $1.3 million. This amount is, is a small price to pay for the many benefits that will accrue to our community. This is certainly a step in the right direction for Detroiters to obtain a living wage within these various positions with growth, growth opportunities that can help achieve greater, greater financial stability. And I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to play a role in uplifting our deserving Detroit citizens and the great city of Detroit. And now I'd like to turn it over to Council President Sheffield who has been fighting this fight long before I got to city council. Good afternoon. Uh, I am also honored to stand here with uh, Mayor Duggan, Council Member Johnson. Thank you for adding your voice uh, and advocacy around this issue as we address this initiative that myself, Council President Pro Tem Tate, and other council members have long championed for. As an advocate for our city employees, it is important that they are fairly compensated for their dedicated service in reflection of a constant inflating economy. It is necessary that their wages is adjusted so that they are able to care for their household with respect to the current cost of living. I am a firm believer in taking a bold stance in providing practical solutions to poverty and empowering our community to remain self-sufficient and thriving. Leading by example, I have done my best to make sure employees are paid decent wages. The resolutions that we, proved, that we approved back in 20, uh, 2019 um, with respect to fast food workers, janitorial services, and security officers with better working conditions and higher wages. So today I stand with that same zeal and passion, excited to see how our great city will stand at the forefront for advocacy of those who work tirelessly for Detroit by making sure that they make a livable wage. I look forward to working with the chair of the Internal Operations Committee, Councilmember Johnson, all of our colleagues, and making sure that this initiative is approved and our workers are respected with living wages. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm feeling really good about our chances of getting this passed, and there's no doubt that Council Member Sheffield, Council Member Tate, they were council members at the time, uh, have advocated for this, a big part of those who supported us to move the number of people down from 1,000 to 270 over a period of time, and it put us in this position uh, that we can uh, finally uh, make the statement that we wanted to make uh, for quite a while. So it's a good day uh, for the employees of the city of Detroit and for everybody who stuck with us, and with that, we'll take any questions. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, just so I'm clear, this will cost an additional 1.3 million, is that correct? Right, yeah, on an annual okay. basis. And are you concerned at all about that hindering the city's budget in any way? So it's gonna start, as we're proposing it, effective July 1st, which will be the new budget in the new uh, fiscal year. And uh, Jay Rising and the finance team uh, tell me uh, that uh, we are doing well enough financially that we can afford this. Uh, we will be proposing effective July 1st that the money be in the budget and uh, from what you're hearing from council members, I think they're going to prioritize 
uh, doing that. And I don't know if you want to speak to that. Yeah, I mean, I think the budget reflects our morals, our values, and I think this is important to all of the council members. Um, we take the advice of the CFO, and if there's money available, we shift priorities based upon what we think is important. And I think, as you heard, Council Member Johnson, myself, and other members prioritize this. So I think it will, it will be done. I actually have one more question, either for you or Council Member uh, Johnson. I'm just curious, when will this go through council? Uh, so we, we very briefly talked about this. Um, I think we're planning to have it come before internal operations within the next few weeks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? No. All right. Thank you very much.